What's going on everybody? I'm Animus J and welcome to a Basics of Redstone tutorial video. We're going to go over the absolute basics for redstone, simple logic gates, and exactly what redstone uh, is and how it works. So starting over here with uh, redstone ore, that is redstone ore and that is what we get redstone dust out of if you're brand new to Minecraft and didn't know that. Most of you watching this probably already did. The way you get it out, you get a uh, pickaxe that has to be iron or above. So that means iron, gold, or diamond pickaxe. And you just left click and break the block. Now that one looked like it gave me two, but if I break it with a fortune three pickaxe, it's gonna give me even more. So you always wanna be mining with a fortune three pickaxe because you're gonna get more out of it. So observers, just really quick, we're not gonna go into detail on observers and the things that you can do with them and all the things that they can check for, but on the basic level, what an observer does is whichever way the face is, it's monitoring the block in front of it. So if that block changes, it's gonna pulse just like that. So whether I place a block or break a block, the observer sees it and the observer gives just a short little pulse. It doesn't stay on, but it just pulses. Now, redstone power. When you have a redstone power source, such as this lever, it could also be a button or it could be a torch, like so. What it does is it powers redstone, a line of redstone, for up to 15 blocks. Now, that doesn't have to be in a straight line. That can even go off into other directions. So right here is 15. Uh, excuse me, this block right here is, is block number 16. Let me just clear this brain real, real quick. So you can see that we're getting sparklies right here on this redstone line, which is number 15, but not here on number 16. If I come off to here, we're still not getting it because that would be another 16 block. But if I go here and here, we are getting it on those two because those count as 15 blocks away. So I could even go here and here. It doesn't matter how many I add in. I could make this all solid like this. It's all going to be powered up to a distance of 15 blocks. Now, in order to get more than 15, what you have to do is add in what I had here originally, which is a repeater. Repeaters are a new renewed source of redstone power. And uh, when you right click a repeater, you can change the delay on it. And we'll go into that uh, a little bit more here in a second, but basically what that does is it delays the signal as, uh, for when it's going to send out. Now over here, we have the comparator and what the comparator does, the primary function of a comparator is to compare what is either checking what's behind it, uh, certain items like chests, cookers, that kind of a thing. Or also, if you have it illuminated, if you have it right clicked like this one is right now, then what it does is it checks an input from the side to compare it. So in normal mode, which is where it's primarily going to be used, when you have items inside of the chest, as you can see right here, what it does is it starts to increase the distance of the redstone. Now this uh, pulse goes off of percentage. So if I add a pickaxe right now, that's one spot filled in this chest and that's giving me one block. If I add 64 chests, that's still one spot, even though it's 64 items, it's still only one block. So if I add a pickaxe in there now, that's two full spots, and it goes the same for eggs, which I only have one egg right now, but if it were 16 eggs, that would count as one full spot, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. And then when we're talking about comparing, right click to go into compare mode. Now notice right now we have the one power, uh, one block of pulse coming out. If I put a full power one block away, it's now subtracting my 15 power coming in from the one going out, which has canceled out my one, all right? I know that's a little bit confusing and it's hard to understand where to use it, but we're gonna go into more about comparators in another video because they can be used for a crap ton of things. All right, so coming over here, we have the not gate. Now this is the first of all the logic gates that we're gonna go through. And when you're thinking about logic gates, it's not really important to remember the names as, as much as 
what they do or associated with what they do, but just think about this. When you're building something and you think, okay, well, uh, in this case, I, I wrote in parentheses, inverted signal. If you need an inverted signal, you need a not gate. So the way that works is my power source right here, this lever is turned on. However, my output, the lamp is turned off. I've inverted it. If I turn it off, now I'm inverting it to turn it on. And where that's useful is things like pistons. Let's say that this is a trap for a player or a mob and you want it to be hidden so that it's constantly powered. Okay, so this piston is constantly on until let's say a player steps on a pressure plate and then that's going to turn it on, invert the signal and retract the piston. That's what knot gates are primarily used for, is things that you need constantly powered and then you're going to depower when an event occurs. OR gates are where you have two different power sources and you need an output based on whether either one or the other is powered. So think about light switches in your hallway. If you turn on the hallway light switch on one end, the lights come on. If you turn it on on the other end, they also come on. Now, depending on how your hallway is, some of them, if you turn one on, you turn the other off, uh, then, it, then it does turn the lights off. And that's, that's a different thing. We'll, we'll, we'll go into that later because that's a little more complicated. But for this one, think about it this way. If this one is on or this one is on, then my output is on. It doesn't matter which one is on. As long as one of them is, the light will always be on. Now, NOR gate, the N before the OR just stands for NOT, which was this one over here, the inverted signal. So NOT OR, and all we're doing is we're taking an OR gate and we're turning it into a NOR gate by inverting it, okay? So we have the OR gate here with our two levers coming into one block, but then we're inverting it. So if both of my inputs are off, then my light is on because it's inverted. If I turn one on, the light goes off or if I turn the other one on, the light goes off as well. Both of them doesn't matter because this is or. If either of them are on, the light will be off. Moving on to the AND gate. The way that AND gates work is if I want this to be on and this to be on, which I had them both already on, in order for this lamp to work, then you would need an AND gate. So. Unlike the OR gate, this is on, but my lamp is not on yet until I turn both of them on. So when both inputs are on, then my output is on. And the way that this particular one works, get out of your sheet, is that we're technically we're inverting the signal right here, right? By adding a redstone torch and we have this block. So let me turn both of these off. So right now with both of my inputs off, we have power here, which turns off this redstone torch. Because this redstone torch is off, my lamp is also off. When I turn on this one, now this lamp is off, which means that normally this uh, dust would not be powered, which would turn on this, except for this guy is still powering it right here. So what I need is for both of these torches to be off, in which case what I actually need is both of these switches to be on. Okay, so with both switches on, that turns off both torches, that turns off this redstone, that turns on this torch, and turns on my lamp. Hopefully that all makes sense. I feel like I kind of went in a circle there with the logic, but that's how an AND gate works. Just think of that. If I have this on and this on, then I have an output. Now, how do you think a NAND gate works? I'm sure you guessed it right. If this is on, which it already is, and this is on, then I will have an inverted signal and this will be off. So on plus on equals off. So if I turn either one of them off, then it will be on. If both of them are off, it's on. So the only time that it will be in the off position is if this and this are both powered, whereas the regular AND gate, the only time it is powered is when this and this are powered. Hopefully that makes sense. Now getting into repeaters, as far as the delay goes, the the ticks on the repeater, and I can't remember at the moment uh, how many ticks it is per second in a game. I think it's 20 ticks per second. 
So if I put this redstone here, you notice the repeater comes on right away. And let's go ahead and actually put a lamp here so you can see it uh, visualized a little bit better. All right, so you can see it gets powered pretty much right away. There is actually a slight delay when you add a repeater, but it's only slight. Now, if I add uh, one movement over, excuse me, and then do it, notice there was just a slight delay from what it was last time. If we do it again, the delay gets a little bit longer. Oops, didn't mean to do that. And then of course, if we go all the way out, it'll have an even stronger delay, okay? Now, the more repeaters obviously that you add in, and the more ticks that you add, the longer, we don't want that, we don't want you to get out of here, then the longer it's gonna take for it to get to the output, okay? And that's when we start getting oops, and that goes for depowering as well. And that's when we start getting into things like clocks, which we're not going to get into deeply, but your basic, your very basic... Why does it insist on raining? I, I need to figure out the code to disable the rain. All right. So your basic redstone clock is simply a bunch of repeaters maxed out on, um, on, on their delay, and then you give them power, and then take it away at one point. Come on now, there we go. And as you can see, we have a clock. Lamp is going on, lamp is going off, lamp is going on, and the lamp is going off. So that is a basic redstone for you guys. Hopefully that helps you at least a little bit. Um, I know it's, it's, it's still kind of like, well, okay, great. Now that I know that, how do I know what to use and when? Well, like I said, when you're building, Try to remember if you find yourself saying something like, well, I need this and this to be on in order for this to happen. Well, then you need an AND gate. Um, other than that, if you have questions or whatever, like I said, feel free to hit me up in the comments. And we are going to be doing more in-depth, more advanced, but, but specifically we're going to be doing more practical redstone tutorials. Things like item filters have been requested, um, hopper clocks, things like that. We're going to go into more practical things that you can use in the game. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed that, if it helped you out, make sure to hit that like button. If you're brand new, make sure to subscribe. But that's it, guys. I'm Animus J, and I will see you next time. Have fun.